Well, it's not just the uh, cute stickers and line mascots that the Japanese messaging app is uh, known for. Their latest effort aimed at keeping its spot is Japan's top music streaming service. Now, Line Music has joined hands with Australian mobile engagement company Tune to Global to boost its music streaming offering with a uh, unique technology that ingests millions of songs at a very, very high rate. So, more to put on offer to all those music lovers out there. Spiro Arcuda, Asia Vice President of Tune Global, joins us from Sydney. Spiro, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. So, what does this mean, basically, by ingesting? Wow, that sounds so off ominous. Uh, ingesting all this music. What is that going to mean for Tune Global? Just a, a huge array? A much huger array? Is that a word? <laughs> Pretty. Pretty much what it is, Bernie. It's basically all about breadth of catalogue. It's about basically diversity of catalogue. But importantly, it's how quickly you can bring that to consumer. And so our deal with Line, uh, the prerequisite was obviously bringing in that very quickly. It's about expediting, and that was obviously on the back of pretty robust technology that Tune Global uses to ensure that we can have a seamless supply of uh, millions of tracks very quickly to the Line Music service. All right. Uh, so who's this going to appeal to? Where does this uh, where does this strengthen? your footprint around your, uh, 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 you know, in your already very, very vast footprint around Asia? It's an interesting one because if you look at the different parts of Asia, whether it's Indonesia, we have a music service there called Nana Kita. That's basically working with local independent labels and, and, and assisting those labels and the music industry there. Shifting from the physical space, it's done a giant leap to the streaming space. So Indonesia is one aspect uh, of the territories. Uh, Japan's an interesting one, it's a very interesting digital music market, uh, streaming the arrival of other services such as Spotify, users uh, traditionally in Japan are into the local music, uh, there's an increase in international repertoire coming through, so you almost got to plot your way through all these countries specifically and, and, and fine tune yourself to their needs, Bernie. Right. Uh, Spiro, uh, how do you, you know, with a deal like this and the kind of, the, and, and the way you approach the markets, do you find yourself always butting up against the global majors, you know, like uh, the Amazon, Apple, the Spotify uh, type of, you know, global international competition, or are you more complimentary? Do you cater completely to a different demographic and market uh, segment? Because what you do is obviously you get very, very local, you get into local artists. It's not, you know, like bringing just a queen bee or like a Taylor Swift to the world, you know, not taking one genre and trying to globalize it, but getting really, really into the local flavor, you know, the, you know, down to, down, to, down to the street level in your markets. That's correct. That's correct. And obviously it, it varies around the different countries in Asia. So it's also the service itself. So you can be a me too type service and compete with the big players, but the challenge right now for anyone entering the market is, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? What are the niches in your service? What type of engagement features you can bring into the service? Chin Global has a proprietary product called Stacker, which is almost like Snapchat-like, where we insert potentially backstage live footage or an, a, a band on tour, where they can insert seamlessly some footage into the service, moderated, of course, but just engage, uh, creating these engagement levers uh, to really keep people uh, staying on your service because there is a lot of competition out there. Uh, diversity, as you pointed out, whether it's local content, are you targeting regional like parts of a particular country, whether it's uh, Indonesia, in Japan specifically, there's a lot of independence. So you really got to do your homework and with that obviously comes the level of experience you have in the industry and understanding how you plot your course through these um, territories in Asia, Bernie. Yeah. Spiro, how do you stay irrelevant? How do you uh, how do you make sure that you're all you're you're, you're going to be around and that you're always going to be relevant? I mean, 2016, a lot of uh, your peers got upended. I mean, there was the Pandora acquisition of Ardio. Uh, you know that that involved a bankruptcy. Uh, Line itself uh, announced a radio closure. Samsung Australia closed their uh, milk music. I mean, there's been, been a lot of rationalization already, right? I mean, this is not the case of the pie is always growing and forever will grow and will always be big enough for everybody. Very, very true. It's easy to get caught off guard. So you need to be very nimble. Uh, again, you need to plot your course. You need to understand complexities of a particular market you're launching in. Uh, you need to be different. Uh, a lot of these companies are the ones that you mentioned, obviously, whether it's a Samsung their service, they sell phones, but they want to do content. So it's all about understanding you must have a two to three year plan, in my view, from my experiences. 
uh, and it's also how you navigate those particular market. You pick a few, you don't pick a range, a huge range of territories, you pick a couple and you basically then na navigate, understand the market, put people on the ground, uh, what, the, you know, what are the other services doing, what are the other pitfalls of companies that have gone, what happened there, and learn from that and again plot your way through that uh, and just kind of stay on the side of all that, but obviously move forward in terms of execution. Okay, what's the next big thing you're watching uh, for the company? Uh, is it uh, new fundraising, uh, new partnerships, uh, you know, uh, getting into new markets, or what's 2017 going to be going to be marked by? It could be all of those, to be honest with you, Bernie. You probably covered a few, but a partnerships is important. So in terms of building a service and deploying in someone like Indonesia, a partnership is really important. It's also about your service differentiators. So Indonesia is a key market for us. Japan, we're already in discussions with a few other players in terms of what we could potentially do there as well. So, and again, we plotted two countries at the moment, but there is a couple more beyond that, but it's also understanding uh, how we will enter that market. Partnerships are key. If you can get a, a solid partnership and integrate uh, into that partnership, that helps you obviously uh, boost your profile. You know, as an example, Line Music in Japan. Okay, Spiro, thank you very much for the time and uh, best of luck for 2017. Spiro, our Curious Two Global joins from Sydney. Coming up, GE doesn't want to stay out with the old economy in India, find out exactly why and what they're doing. That's in